Hey, Katrina, I thought maybe we might talk about rear ballast today. You mean uh, the not organic type? Well, you could take one look at me, Katrina, and you can tell that I do know a lot about ballast. We did just eat dinner. But Christy says that's front ballast instead of rear ballast, so maybe, maybe we do have something to educate on. Hmm, okay. I thought we might take a look at a couple different ballast options for little tractors. Now, this is not John Deere tractors per se. This is any tractor. The only reason it's John Deere is because the examples we have happen to be green. Let's start out with this right here. This is probably the most popular ballast option that you can see, and it's called a ballast box. Now, John Deere makes a ballast box that I would say probably most people end up buying with their little tractor and loader. And then this one is made by a third party. It's purely a Chinese imported uh, ballast box. Um, it's a little bit different than the John Deere one in that it does have a two inch receiver at the bottom. And it also has this uh, back door, presumably for draining here. Check this out, Catrill, this, this back door. I guess, I guess when you fill it up with whatever material you want, you, you can drain it. Unfortunately, I can't hardly make this thing work. I mean, I, I, I try and I get it stuck in there. <laughs> if I hold it just right, but I'm sure when I get it full of mud and dirt a little bit, it's not going to work at all, but it's really hard to get it back and forth. Now, we'll show you inside. There's just all kinds of little metal shavings and everything in here. Check this out, Christy. That came in it? Yeah. Catrill thought maybe it was a starter weight set. Yeah, I mean... There's not much to it, but it will increase tariffs. <laughs> <laughs> this ballast box also has some pipes already welded into it. I suppose they're cup could... holders. Yeah, I think they're something holders. So I guess that's what these are for. Assuming I can get them in here. I mean, that works okay. What do you need a pitchfork for if you've got a. Uh, well, maybe we could tea use. Bar. Maybe we could use this thing for digging taters. See, we could take our fork with us. Oh, all 10 feet to the tater patch? Yeah, and then we can put our taters in here. Oh, I see. And then when it comes time to cook? It just, yep. Now, one of the other options we have here is the heavy hitch. With this type of an approach, you can have removable weights. See, each of these weights weighs 42 pounds. And you can store it all together like this on a cart. But if you don't have enough space for that, you can take these weights off. You can put them on a shelf, right? They're, they're really compact, really small. And they'll stand up by themselves. Yeah. And the weight bracket, <laughs> can you actually pick one up? Yeah. Okay. Pick up with your legs, not with your back. What, That's pretty good. What's next? Three. I don't have three hands. About time you're getting those things put back on there. Good help it cheap. Cheap help it good. This help ain't good or cheap. <laughs> One of the challenges then is how do you store this thing? Because if you set it off the three-point hitch, which you can do, you can set it down. That's one of the reasons these three-point hitch brackets are so high, is that you can set it down and then still unhitch the three-point hitch. But of course, it's stuck on the floor. You can't move it. It's five, 600 pounds. There's nothing you can do with it, right? Well, one option is to get a furniture dolly, something like that. It better be a heavy-duty one, and actually put down, put this on it. The thing is, this one's not flat on the bottom. It's just got the two-inch tube in the middle, and then it just has just some stuff around the edge. So it actually would be, you know, not real easy to get on a, a furniture dolly. Look how low this thing is. We've got the three-point hitch all the way up. Okay, and this thing is very close to the ground. How close is it to the ground there? Ten inches off the ground. Ten inches, and that's on flat concrete. Maybe ten and a half if it's feeling tall. This thing sticks back a long ways. That's another thing that bothers me about it is it's back and low, right? And I'm just afraid this is going to cause us some difficulty when we go to get on our trailer. You, you can put a lot of different things in these things, Katrina. You can take, like this is limestone right out of my driveway. If you fill it up with that, it'll be good and heavy. You, a lot of guys put concrete in them. Of course, that's immovable. Once you do that, it's, it's a one-way trip. Some people put sand in them. Some people uh, put big rocks in them or something like that. Just anything that's heavy is fine. You can put steel in it. Uh, you can put weights in it like this, anything like that. Or you can put your catrille in it. 
How much is rent in here? It's not too bad. You think you can make it in there? I don't know. Better than my fresh room dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> Catrils are pretty hard to come by. There aren't very many of them, so that's probably not a recommended uh, source of material for your ballast box. I, I second that. They're also pretty lightweight. They also uh, get hungry. So this is my favorite mode of transportation. Give me a reading, Jonesy. About four inches. Okay, now you might ask, are you sure this is as high as it'll go? And the answer is yes, it's as high as it'll go. If you'll remember and look back in an older video, we replaced this piece on our three-point hitch with an adjustable one on both sides. So we have the ability to lift extra high. What I've done here to make this fair is to lengthen both sides of this three-point hitch so that it's the same length as this. Oh. So this is the stock max height of a John Deere 1025R. We're being as absolutely fair as we can be. It, wasn't, it would not be fair, in my opinion, to show this thing with the modification we've done to allow extra lift height. You can also try your Jimmy if you've got one of them for a neighbor. <laughs> he might be a good ballast fit. I think he's more effective and probably complains less. I don't know about that. I'm kind yeah. of cramped already. <laughs> <laughs> what we want to show you here is that loading on the trailer, I'm not even to the steepest point yet, and I'm already dragging the ground. And we just have Jimmy, and that's only three or four hundred pounds in there. Oh, good grief. <laughs> Depends on what I eat for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually need probably five hundred in there, and so the point is, seriously, it would be down a lot further. There would be a lot more stress on it here. So I really don't know how we're going to be able to get it up on the trailer without dragging the ground. Again, I have it at the highest point that it would be with a standard side. So not only how far down it goes, but how far back it goes. This far corner is way back there and close to the ground. So many times we're backing into up to something that's back there or we're, we're in a low spot where we're trying to dig. I mean, you've even been in that kind of situation the other night when we were when we were working with the grapple. It would have been, this thing would have been in the way. Yeah, it dragged the ground, yeah, especially on steeper hills. So it's a more cost-effective solution, there's no question about that. But I guess in my situation, I've been around for a long time, and I'm kind of tired of doing the cheapskate solutions sometimes. Okay. I don't sometimes know about it you. it costs you more. Yeah. It really does, and, and so for me, the heavy hitch is just the way to go. Now this little cart is sweet. Very nice. Not only is it a cart when it's fully loaded, if you want to use just the hitch without the weights, you can put your weights right there on the bar. So this is really kind of the standard heavy hitch configuration. And what I mean by standard is it's got eight 42 pound weights on it. And for most 1025R or 1 Series or BX uses, this is really about the amount of weight you need. I oftentimes run 470 pounds in the middle here to get just a little extra weight. But as I've kind of hinted in the past, Johnny does have a little extra juice in the joints, so to speak, that I've uh, done off camera. And don't even ask, because no, I'm not going to show you how to do it. So I do need a little bit more ballast, perhaps, than some people do. But this heavy hitch configuration, you can tell without even getting a measuring tape out, how much more compact it is to the tractor, and how even, even the lowest point is just this receiver hitch here, it's got a nice, uh, on trucks they call it an angle of approach, right? So it, it's got a nice angle here, so there's plenty of room if you're on a steep slope or something like that without any issue there. The best part is it doesn't require any catrils as uh, an ingredient. Yeah, I guess I need to get you a seat right there though so you can ride along. Yeah, I guess so, because I mean, I don't even know where I'm supposed to sit. This is the offset hitch. So the bar on the hitch is actually an inch or so further back than the regular Super Duty hitch. So while I was talking about how compact this one is, the regular Super Duty hitch is even closer, probably a good inch or more closer to the, to the quick hitch here. So these are very compact units. Once you've got these weights, there's a lot of flexibility and versatility in how you can use them. This is a heavy hitch front weight bracket that goes on to the front quick hitch if you have the 54 blade or other or snow blower that has the quick hitch attachment. 
And in that usage, you can actually put the eight of these weights on this to hold the front end down if you don't want to have the loader on. So I oftentimes use that when I'm using the tiller so that I don't have to have that big loader bracket around. So it helps me to be able to turn shorter and tighter places and things like that. And I can use these same weights so I don't have to buy them again, mm -hmm. right? So even though there's a higher upfront cost to get these weights and the heavy hitch bracket and everything, there's a lot of versatility in how you can use them, okay? So you don't have to have a separate set of weights for the front, a separate set for the rear. You would never want to use front weights and rear weights at the same time anyway. Unless so. you, uh, you're just really scared about your tractor floating away. Yeah. Or your mower is really... Uh, it's whipping up a lot and you're thinking you might take off. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of mower you would like. I think I would like that mower. It's been a while since I had a crazy idea on this channel. It's been a while since you've been on this channel. I know. Because every time I come back you stuff me in a box. I do stuff you in a box in several different videos, don't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember, with your Heavy Hitch products, you can get a 5% discount at heavyhitch.com. That's on all the products. Weight brackets, tooth bars, hillers and betters, and weights, the weights themselves. The shipping on the weights is incredibly inexpensive. And if you never want to forget what the coupon code is, you can get the hat that will remind you. Yep. Link for the hat is in the description. TractorTimeWithTim.com slash shop. And your, your brim is so flat, you're almost cool. No. Can't be. I know. That's why it's almost cool. I think she might be wanting college tuition money or something like that. Mm, you got me. <laughs> Buy your heavy hitches <laughs> with the coupon code DTWT and send me to college. Give me a depth here, Jonesy. This is a little over a foot of clearance still. Yeah. Now we're about at the same place that we were when we hit the ground on the other one. We're still not at our worst location yet. See, we've still got to go another foot forward to get to the worst point. Let me try that. About 10 or 10 and a half inches, whereas the other one had already dragged the ground before. Now I will say that this is one challenge I've always had with this little tractor. I think I have a particularly difficult boarding angle here because of the way the the pitch of the trailer sets and the way our slope is there. But we have this problem at customer sites too. Uh, sometimes I'll have a, an attachment on maybe the backhoe. The backhoe is particularly bad. That drags the ground and the ground's no, not too big of a deal. I might be able to get away with that, but I really hate dragging on folks' asphalt. And so to me, the ballast box is a showstopper. It's not useful to me. You might just say it doesn't measure up. <laughs> Well, I, <laughs> I couldn't find anything else to use this thing for. So, wait, wait, it's not useful to you. So you think I want it? Yeah, I thought it would be a good place to put some, you know, maybe some mums. You always wanted a mum. Yeah. Right here, a but big yellow mum right on top of that. Right in a big green box. What am I supposed to do with it? Well, I guess I can try it for <laughs> a few days and see what the neighbors say. Your very own tractor attachment. Can I give it back? <laughs> we could leave it one of the neighbors yard where they're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> they would never know it came from us. So like the pink flamingo? No, they wouldn't, would they? <laughs> well, I hope you've been able to see the different options in ballast. I mean, we have the Catrille ballast, we have the Jimmy ballast. We don't have a box heavy enough for the Tim ballast, so we can't really show you that one. Hopefully you've been able to see some of the differences between the box and the heavy hitch product. and and maybe can see some of the reasons why the premium price for the heavy hitch is really worth it. We find it really effective uh, on our property. So thanks, Catrille. Thanks, Jimmy. And we'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. And Jim, and Catrille, and Christy. And the box. <laughs> and, and. so you can slide meals through the door. Or not. Yeah. You get it open, you can't get it closed, can you? Wow. I never touched that. Oh. So, Dad, in the box. Everybody else has done it. Oh, it's got a little, it does have a little gate on it.